BCW faithful and first time viewers, welcome to The Curtain Call, a weekly pro wrestling show that gets you up to speed with everything going on in the world of BCW. And if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe below and follow Brie Combination Wrestling on all social media platforms. And if you're wondering who this ruggedly handsome individual is with these melodious tones that are piping right through your speakerphone, I am your host, the host that covers the most, Jimmy J. And now that I got myself over, got that out of the way, we can talk BCW. And it's official. Faithful, we're in May and the quarantine continues. But I got to be honest with you, I am grateful for social distancing right now. And you may be asking yourself, Jimmy, why is that? Well, it's a very, very simple answer. It's one name. And that name, Savannah Evans. Yes, because Faithful, this week I sat down via Skype with Savannah Evans, the cannibal, and well, I was grateful that it was via Skype. You see, the last time Savannah and I spoke was at Queen of the North, the last BCW show, where she became the first ever Queen of the Monsters. And, well, ever since, she hasn't received anything for that. She hasn't received a, a tiara, a trophy, or anything. And she's been irate. She's been asking, where is it? Something. Well, she did receive something. This last conversation, and we're going to show you right now. I'm not going to spoil it. Let's get right to our conversation that we had on Skype. Here is the cannibal, Savannah Evans. All right, Faithful, right now joining me. Oh, man. Uh, it's a woman I'm, I'm petrified of, okay, because the last encounter with her. She's the cannibal, Savannah Evans. Savannah, how are you today, dear? Good. What's up? How are you? Uh, I'm doing great uh, now that I'm talking to you, but I'm talking, you know, via... Skype, I'm not in person because I know if I was in person, um, I don't know, bad things might happen because I, no, I know for sure, for sure, for sure. I know everything's know on pause right now because of quarantine. We, we have an understanding, but next time I see you, thank God. Listen, I've been saying my prayers, eating my vitamins. Um, mm. I gotta ask you first before we get into this, uh, how you've been holding up during this time? Uh, pretty good, actually. Like, you know, uh, I'm the type of person that's gonna take things day by day, or like one step at a time. And try not to think too far ahead. Um, but, you know, it hasn't been bad. Like, uh, I know some people were having problems, like, with their stimulus check or, you know, actually getting out and about to different stores, finding toilet paper or Lysol or what have you. But everything's been pretty, uh, pretty good for me, thankfully. I can't complain. Now, do you have stock in Lysol? If I was really, really smart, I probably would, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, everybody was scrambling. It was getting, it was getting crazy out here. It was scrambling for, for like you said, toilet paper and all these uh, essential it goods. Wild. It never, it didn't make sense to me because I got to be honest. You, you buy all this toilet paper, but you're not buying food. So yes. in order to use the toilet paper, you have to use the bathroom. You have to eat. I don't know. It's in just, order to need the toilet. Paper. Yeah, exactly. In order to need you. the toilet paper. I get you. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about that people. Going crazy out there, but I'm glad to see that you're doing well. I'm happy that you joined us today. Um, yes. And you know, there's something that had happened uh, a couple of months back, and it was our, our last show, the Queen of the North, too. Mm -hmm. And you became the first ever Queen of the Monsters. It was a fatal four way. It was you, Davian. It was Holla Dead, and I believe there was there was one other lady. Oh, Rufus Lala. Respect. Don't forget her name. I she can't will make. She will make you remember it. Respectfully, right now, Lala. Respectfully. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it was it was an incredible match. It was under 15 minutes, but um, nonstop from beginning to end. You ladies put on what I thought was the showstopper of the night. So I got to give all four of you credit. Uh, you came out on top, uh, becoming the first ever queen of the monsters. And you know, unfortunately, Savannah, we didn't we didn't have nothing to give you that night. That's right. You guys but, showed up empty-handed. And that's all thanks to management. It's not my fault, but I, I took, uh, you know, the heat for you it. Yeah, take, take the heat for it for sure. But what I have right here, Savannah, is <laughs> something very prestigious. I'm going to show you right now. I know I know you're, you're waiting right here. Mm. Bang! What about this? There Wait. No, right no, 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 no. That's not going to cut it. Look, I even had the little monster. 
It's first no, ever created no. of monsters. Yeah. Put put that away. Put that away. Um, a trophy. I need a trophy. Okay. There was a men's uh, monster match. Okay, King of the Monsters, and the winner of that got a trophy. I get nothing. Technically, it's not nothing. It's it's something. I, I worked. It was a piece of paper the, with it's, a look at the fine scribbled detail. person on it that is supposed to be me, I guess. Look at the fine details on that on that drawing. I mean, I'm very artistic. I understand, I, you guys. Uh, but listen, Savannah. Yeah. I mean, listen. I promise you. I promise you. If this doesn't cut it for you, I'm sorry. But I'm gonna get in contact management. We're gonna get you a trophy. Do We're it. gonna have the trophy. This is a substitute for the time being. Um. Because, damn, you definitely deserved it. And I, I got to ask you this question going back. Um, how much do you bench? <laughs> you go ask the lady how much she bench. I, I have to know because, she, Jesus, like, I, I mean, if I was looking for a bodyguard, forget some of these guys out here. Because a lot of these guys are a bunch of sissy Marys nowadays. I would go for Savannah Evans, right? I, I, curious. To answer your question, I bench two holidays, okay? Not not just one holiday, but two. Oh man, um, yeah, definitely. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk off air about this because I might need a bodyguard during this pandemic. Yeah, um, get Savannah online. But let's uh, let's start from the beginning, though. What did it for you? What got you into this sport? This great sport of pro wrestling. I got into watching it maybe like 11, 12 ish years of age. Um, my dad first tried to get me to watch. I think it was some episode maybe nitro i guess uh booker t i remember booker t was on um disco inferno was on like i i watched it for like a little bit but it didn't really captivate me or anything um and then one time at i don't know some kind of family get together like my uncles and um my grandpa were watching wrestling with they were watching wwf and like i sat down and i was like oh this is cool and like, i kept watching um, but I always remember when I was younger, like The Rock was really the one that made me think, uh, oh, wow, like this guy's really captivating. And you tuned in to, to be like, what is he going to do next? You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. doing all this crazy outlandish saying like the, the craziest things. Like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do next? So I kind of I kind of say The Rock usually got me into wrestling. How did you get into the business? Who trained you? Mm -hmm. Uh, so my my main trainer is Mr. Number One George South, so very old school. Um, he's the one that that really kind of not even like trained me, but but I grew up I guess with him in a wrestling aspect, not like actually grew up with him. But he's kind of like um, I guess like that father figure some people would consider. The other trainers there are Caleb Conley and Jake Manning. Occasionally, uh, J.D. Drake, the real James Drake, not the U.K. <laughs> James Drake, uh, he'll stop by and bestow us with uh, a lot of his knowledge. So I always credit, you know, those guys and, of course, Cedric Alexander, too, with, you know, really, really training me. Now, you worked in multiple different uh, independent wrestling organizations, and you stepped in the ring with a lot of different people. But who did you step in the ring with that you think is, uh, for a shoot, the toughest individual that you faced? Ooh, as far as like tough people that I have wrestled, uh, Soraya Knight always comes to mind. Um, a lot of people, well, some people uh, know her as Paige's mom, but obviously she's had her own career like way before that. Um, she's super tough. And maybe the first person that I got in the ring with that I was like, oh, okay, you know. Um, <laughs> and super thankful of that. Like, I'm glad I got to work with her. Um, so definitely her. Um, I mentioned James Drake already. He's tough. Like, I don't even know if tough describes, uh, really puts it into perspective, but yeah. I mean, listen, you're a tough lady yourself. So for you to say that these individuals are tough, you know, to go against and that, that must say a lot about them as well. And, uh, again, you face a lot of people, but who is it that you haven't faced that maybe we could see, you know, come to fruition in a BCW ring? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, someone that I wrestled once, but uh, obviously I want to do it again, is Tasha Steeles. Okay. I think that would be great. Talking about, you know, tough, tough wrestlers, badasses. Uh, that's a bad chick, so would definitely like to square up with her again. I don't know, like, 
I, I feel like there's so many uh, so many people that I haven't locked up with. Like, um, but if BCW can make that happen, that'd be awesome. Like, forever I've wanted to wrestle uh, La Rosa Negra and Thunder Rosa. So either okay. one of them, I'd be happy with. And listen, that's something that we could definitely uh, make happen over here at BCW. Uh, you're the first queen of the monsters. I know once we get back up and running, uh, you know, you're going to have a lot of people gunning for that, that title. So you never know what to expect. How have you been planning right now? What have you been doing? I've been planning to, you mean to uh, keep my queen of the monsters uh, title name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> status. Yeah. Listen, it's, it's, status. Um, yeah. I, Trophy soon, soon to be trophy. <sighs> trophy, Promise. thank you. Um, more than just that piece of paper, anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Dur during quarantine, I feel like um, obviously you, um, you know, physically train, but mentally, I think is is the most that we can do in quarantine. Just the idea of taking that moment to assess how do I feel, what's making me feel that way, and how can I change or take the steps to create a different process of thinking like i think everyone gets to a point where they're like man i don't feel like myself or man this has really got me down or my anxiety is really high but i think it's super important to know why you're feeling that way and i think a lot of people are very quick to maybe rely on other things like here's this prescription drug or you know whatever and that stuff helps but you're just kind of covering covering it up and i know some people might think well that's insensitive because i actually do have you know chronic depression or i have chronic anxiety i'm not saying that you don't i'm just saying there's different things you can do in your life from that can that can help you um get out of that or just take a moment to step away from that that way of thinking or that way of feeling um stuff like you know what you're eating like like talking about how you feel with people that matter to you um like working out like i think people don't understand how important that is because even even if you're 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 just going on a walk every day you don't even, you don't have to be in the gym working on like a bikini body but just getting your blood flowing for 30 minutes a day it puts you in a better headspace and it's something to get you out of the bed because some people do not even feel like getting out of the bed in the morning and just getting up going outside fresh air just for a walk you know or take your dog out for some playtime. mental health is something that's very important and we should be talking about it like openly and honestly we should be talking about it because right now a lot of people are going through it a lot of people are, are suffering from these things and you know some people don't know how to deal with it some people just like you said they they go the easy route and they take medication thinking it's going to help them. But you know, sometimes that, that medication actually causes the same thing that it's treating. So somebody that really wasn't going or, or psychotic, let's say, takes this medication and they become psychotic and um, it affects you. So I think your approach uh, to that as well, like exercising and eating right, it, it's just so important, um, you know, because, and you know this as well as I do, uh, you know, you exercise, you eat right, you feel better. How can you break them out of that that routine that they're in? How, how can you do that? What would you? What advice would you give them? I think it's super important to have, even if it's just one person, but to have someone that you can talk to about how you're feeling, whether it's, you know, um, hey, I feel upset today, or hey, um, you know, at a, at a regular time, like, hey, let's go get food, let's go talk. Um, obviously, not so much during the quarantine, and maybe that that is probably probably like part of the problem too is you don't have your normal outlet for releasing that type of thing you can't hey you know let's go to the movies let's hang out let's go get some food and just talk like that option kind of is taken away like we can still call each other it's not the same and i think also too that that part of having things that are familiar to you taken away i think that adds on to people's depression it adds on to people's anxiety it, it definitely doesn't help um, but I think like talking to people, honestly, is the first step, like getting, getting up out of bed, even if it's just to, I don't know, get, get up and go to the kitchen. Maybe it's every time you go to the kitchen, like, you know, do, do some squats or turn some music on, get up and get dancing. You don't even have to do any type of like workout regimen or routine. Like 
turn some music on, get up and get dancing. You will, it, it will pick you up. Like, like make yourself, put yourself in the mindset to accept feeling another way other than how you currently are feeling too. She said, it. get up, you got to start dancing. Anybody watching this right now that's going through it. I got, I, got a, well, I don't know what you got. I got the sprinkler. I can sprinkler? do it. Sprinkler? Yeah. yeah. The Roger oh, Rabbit. Sprinkler. I got the lawnmower. We, I get the shovel. I can't do the worm. I do the slug. What do you do? Get a little Tootsie <laughs> Roll action. Cabbage, uh, patch. cabbage patch, maybe. Yeah. Get, yeah. Get the, that's it. Go see. I feel better already. Jesus. <laughs> just talking to Savannah. I see. This is what happens. Positivity, man. It's just you know, it's very important, and you have to uh, you have to try to spread that because God knows there's so many so many negative people out here. Yeah. And, oh, uh, the, there is so many negative points of view and thoughts out there in the world. Like, yes, we we know that they're there. We can't acknowledge them, but let's not pile onto them. Like, let's, you know, I'm really big about acknowledging positive things. Like, if you if you follow any of my social media, probably usually Facebook would be the good, best example of this. I'm always, like, always reposting, like, positive things. That's all, like, I don't want to get caught up in negative things. I'm not saying that they're not there and that I should ignore negative things but i always want to be thinking the positive because you open yourself up to more positive things thinking positive yeah. if you're only looking for the negative and things or people or situations and that's all you're going to see because you've already programmed your mind to just look at this negativity and, and, the, and the social <laughs> media does it too like the media does it all the time yeah. like you you are less likely to hear about something good that someone did or a good situation or something like that and you're more likely to hear about something that's super negative like it's i don't know if it's just people if it's just the way we're originally wired but i think it's important to stop you know what what you're thinking uh why am i feeling this way and kind of uh act on that like um i don't think you should ignore when you are feeling bad when you are feeling sad when you are feeling anxious those are things that you should acknowledge too give yourself time to feel that but then you know start working on getting out of it as well uh, music again is, is also really powerful pe for people too um but get yourself in that good headspace uh kill all the doubts turn your music on and i'm super go with the flow so yeah uh i just get myself ready to be like you know what happens it's going to happen. And you can't change that once it already <laughs> happened. So why are you going to stress about it afterwards? Yeah, listen, music, like to your point, it's like the soundtrack of life. What music do you listen to? So the past maybe five or so years, I've been kind of like bad about only listening to what's on the radio. Uh, oh. You know? <laughs> oh, top 40 all the time. It's like. Right. <laughs> right. And that's cool, you know, because. Uh, you need music that's just gonna that's all around kind of like okay good feeling like it maybe doesn't always have to have the best lyrical content but if it <laughs> makes you feel if it makes you get up and move that's a success too <laughs> like, hey. um, let me think on my phone right now I want to say I have a lot of the weekend and a lot of Rihanna um, and then a lot of yeah just like top type hits um, what I meant to listen to earlier today, because that always always like puts me in a good mood, is the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks, like Volume One and Volume Two. Oh, oh my god! Guardians gosh. of the Galaxy, I gotta get on this. Right? Ooh, it's so good, so good. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, with fire. Me in a good yeah, mood. Oh, so my dad was. Um, I guess both my parents were really good, big on Earth, Wind, and Fire, but I no longer have my dad with me. So whenever I listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire, it's like, that's dad, that's dad. That's awesome. See, it's like I said, it's a soundtrack of life. You, you hear a song and it brings you back to, you know, a certain period of time. It, it takes you back into that, you know, your time that you were spending maybe with your family or uh, time that you had with your friends or whatnot. And uh, that's that's the beauty of music, Savannah, the beauty of music. It, it really is. I saw real quick um, a, I guess it was like a meme or a post, maybe yesterday. And it's like, um, do you ever like turn on a song that you listened to growing <laughs> up? And it just takes you to that place of like middle school or high school. And you're like, I love this even more now, you know? What was the soundtrack when you were growing up? Oh, gr um, God. 
I guess it's still music that I still enjoy to this day. Like, like I like ninety nine two thousands hip hop and rap. Like when I was when I was a little kid, like DMX was probably my favorite rapper, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> but, like, as an as an eleven year old, be like DMX is my favorite rapper, man. <laughs> what? That's my man's in there. It's a bad going into school. Like that's yeah. my guy. Let me hear a DMX impersonation. Come on. No, I do, I do not have a DMX impersonation. <laughs> but I really, I don't know. Maybe it's probably the intensity, but then also sometimes he get really like raw and real about how he feels about, you know, because he, I believe he was bipolar or he is bipolar too. Um, so just a lot of stuff that he talks about, you know, feeling himself. But yeah, I was really big into like DMX and like Method Man. Um, then later, like, into uh, like Ludacris, Nelly, like oh, all Nelly, those yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, now you're bringing it back to me, see? see? I remember Nelly, see? and it sounds crazy, I was in seventh grade when Country Grammar came out, and I was doing dances on on the desk in school. I got in trouble for that, but we were doing dances with music. Did. Yeah, well, it was it was a great time. <laughs> hey, you think, it? oh man, you brought it back there. What about, see? um? You see, that's what I'm talking about. And even to this day, I think music nowadays, I, I can't find anything really I enjoy. I don't know. I mean, I know you listen to, you know, Top 40, whatever's on the radio right now, but you know that music has changed. Yes. I think. I think, like, there's not a lot of people that could be original out there. They are doing B6 Mafia versus Bone Thugs and Harmony, I think, tonight on Instagram or something. What? And I'm like, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What time <laughs> is this going down? I don't know, like, I maybe, I want to say I heard that it was tonight, but I, I don't quote me or anything like that. But, uh, you know, again, another two groups that, like, when you heard them when you were younger, you're like, yeah. That's, man, it, there's nothing like, uh, in my opinion, like the 90s. I yes. Don't know, it's, it's just me, people say I'm living in the past. I'm not living in the past. It's just, you know, you, I can't find nothing. Do you find yourself with the same problem? You can't find nothing nowadays. Uh, that could real, except for I guess the convenience of you know technology. Other yeah. than that, yeah. You know, what and else? And I think that's part of why, like I said, I I'm, nowadays I kind of only main listen to what's on the radio because it's convenient. Like you were saying, you just get in the car and it's there. Um, but I do know, you know, th there are artists out there that are out there and then just laying their whole soul out for people to hear. And I want to say that's what people relate to because a lot of stuff nowadays if we're talking rap is just something that sounds nice maybe not anything you can relate to lyrically but something that just sounds like oh, okay yeah that's that's awesome last summer my cousin up in virginia he introduced me to like the tiny desk concerts so like um i think there was one that the, uh, her was performing another one anderson pack was uh pack was performing and like those are those are people that like you hear it in their soul when they sing. Like you just, you, it's like they're inviting you to listen to a piece of them. So that's always refreshing. I mean, wrestlers, they're artists. Has it ever crossed your mind though, as you were in that ring? What um, am I doing right now? I think about it more now than I used to, as far as this is what I can create. It's not, you know, anything that is super set in stone, like, you know, do this, do that. Like, I can put my own spin on things. I can, you know, um, handle different situations differently. I can create, you know, my own, what I want people to get out of it. I, I think I consider that a lot more now than I used to, that this is my art. This is my work for people to enjoy. Uh, but whoever, whoever uh, wants to be put in front of me, let's do it. Not, not trying to... Um, obsessed about getting back too much because then I, I honestly believe that makes uh, you even more anxious. Let me let me get out. Let me get back to wrestling. Let's do this. And like you said earlier, we don't really know when that time will come or in what capacity, what that will even look like, you know, starting yeah. having shows again. But um, yeah, yeah. Watching um, old matches, watching like current stuff too. Sometimes I don't always take the time to watch what's currently uh, going on. What's your favorite time of uh, pro wrestling? What uh, what era? I think the Attitude Era will always be like timeless for me. Like that's my I guess classic uh, <laughs> wrestling era yeah. because 
you know, it just, it came to me at such a time where I was just enthralled with it all. And it was at like its highest peak of just insanity, I think is the word for it. Yeah, it was crazy. All the, yeah, all the crazy things that we couldn't, we definitely couldn't get away with, you know, on TV, you know, nowadays, like indies are a different story, but um, yeah, I, I always will have like a special place for Attitude Era in like, in my heart, I guess. Were you, were you one of those kids in school that would just like practice some maneuvers on other kids in the hallways? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> no, I, I think I was pretty mild mannered in school, you know. Your name, The Cannibal. How'd you come up with that name? When I started wrestling, I was at a point where uh, I didn't have a character. I was just, just happy to be here, like, come watch me wrestle. <laughs> and you can only get away with that so long. Like, obviously, when you're new, you know, that's a thing. But you can only get away with that for so long. You need, like, a little bit of depth. You need to have, like, a connection with the audience and stuff like that. Um, so it actually kind of comes off of, uh, I was in a group called uh, Sexy Young Caramels. It was um, all girl group, all black group, me, uh, Big Swole and uh, Devin Nicole King. So, you know, we were we were out there, we were sassy, we didn't take no shit, <laughs> like, but fun. But you yeah. know what I mean? Like a really, a really fun thing. And I don't think, like definitely in the area, no one was, had was doing that at the time so it was definitely fun we worked a lot of uh mainly queens of combat matches together we we were at a point where we were wanting to you know bring that to other companies but it, it didn't last like super long um unfortunately but uh the initials were syc which to me it sounds like sick i'm like oh that is sick like that's <laughs> awesome so, <laughs> yeah so i wanted to keep that um that kind of like the acronym that moniker because it can be used for so many things you know like branding wise and stuff um so i later just started like when we broke up i started going by the sexy young cannibal and it's, it's like a weird playoff like fine young cannibal so i saw a lot of people like using that uh reference and sending that album cover and stuff like that to me and i was like yeah that was funny but i i really wanted it to be kind of um when it evolved into like, you know, like badass, tough girl character, I was like, no, let me just shorten it to the cannibal because it's like, uh, I don't care who you put in front of me. Like I'm here to fight, fighting what I like to do and I'll just eat them alive. So it, it turned into <laughs> just like- <laughs> you, know, you can eat your life. Yeah, it doesn't matter who it is, dude, girl, I'm gonna eat them alive. So that's just that's where it's at right now that's what it's just kind of evolved to you know um i do want to start taking like um training and some type of martial arts to help incorporate into my wrestling so i think that's probably the next the next step for the cannibal i i hope it doesn't happen anytime soon and i hope if it does happen that we have this trophy to you otherwise somebody's in trouble uh, I'm, I'm waiting on that trophy. Okay. Uh, Cole, keep, he, he told me, I keep harassing him. I'm, I'm, that's something I guess we got to talk about all fair. I got to get mad at him. The so, more you remind me. Yeah, I got to stop reminding <laughs> me. Jesus, sorry, this is my fault. <laughs> I apologize sincerely. Uh, go, going back to independent wrestling now. You've been, again, multiple organizations. Which organization uh, other than BCW have you been in that, that you really enjoy your, your time there? I would uh, be wrong to not say BCW. I do enjoy my time at, at BCW. Uh, also, um, Fest, I love going down to Fest in Florida. They're always a fun, good time. The atmosphere is great. The crowd is great. Um, also, uh, Battle Club. I do love Battle Club up in New York. I know I mentioned them already. And uh, Wildcat Sports in Louisiana. Uh, and then also, um, locally for me, uh, PWX. I, I enjoy going there. The the fans make it really worth it. Like, they, they're behind me, and, like, they let everyone know, you know, as soon, right. as, soon as I show up. Yeah. So I'm always, I'm always having a good time there. That's a good feeling, though, you know, when the crowd's behind you mm. and you got that the support. It just gives you that adrenaline boost, right? Can't replace it. Can't replace that feeling. No, I bet. And... You know, north and south, you've been in, in the organizations. Uh, what's the difference between up here in the northeast versus the south? Oh, it depends on where in the south we're talking. Um, some of the um, smaller 
we'll say smaller town areas in the South, they they enjoy their good old fashioned wrestling. And that's kind of like my basis anyway. You know, they they want to see good uh, triumph over evil. They want to see, you know, all of your like classic wrestling moves. Uh, whereas when you go to, you know, New York, like the crowd is is accepting to like uh, from right out the gate they don't know you the crowd will accept you to a certain level but you kind of really have to like prove yourself uh and win them over and that's it's it's a good challenge you know what i mean like i, I yeah. appreciate something like that and then um also to like a, a crowd you know obviously florida is south but i personally don't consider florida like southern you know what i mean like, yeah, it's a weird state, yeah. man. <laughs> Like yeah, so four kids up over there, right? And and I like Florida because uh, that crowd they they just want to see everything, you know. They they would prefer you to do all of your high flying, death defying stuff, but you know, like they 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 they're a cool crowd too. Now, do you think all that high flying, uh, you know, death defying maneuvers is kind of getting played out a little bit right now? I mean, you think we should tone it down? Uh. I personally do think it's it's a little uh, overdone nowadays. Like if you have too many moments like that, then what is it? What does it really mean at the end of the day? Like you have to make them special for sure. Um, but you know, it all it all depends on what your crowd is like, what they feel like seeing on that particular day, at that particular time, because it it always changes. Now that's tough too, because I know you have to. Uh you get adjusted to, you know, the crowd over there and see how, you know, how they are. And, and what do you go through? Like, uh, how do you know when you're going to have a tough crowd or how do you know if there's going to be, you know, if it's going to be easy. Like you could just do something as simple as a chop and everybody's going to go crazy. Uh, you never know until you go out there, unless you've been there before. Yeah. Uh, you never know. And you just, you kind of listen to them while you're out there. Like, what what are they hitting on like what are they biting on like what are they what do you think they'll like you know give them something if they bite you know maybe don't do so much more of that or you know try something else so it really just depends because some people are very um you know let me just do my stuff and uh whether the crowd cares almost to to some people it it seems as if it doesn't even matter so (laughs) you know (laughs) you just you never know how the crowd's going to react and you just got to you gotta pay attention. Pay attention to what they're they're telling you. Have you ever went out there and you thought that man, you were just destroying it out there? Like it, you would, you know, the crowd was like silent, but you guys were putting on like a five star match. I think sometimes you can get so caught up that you uh, that you don't hear the crowd. But I don't know. There's not really a moment that I can really recall where that particular situation happened. I'm not saying it did it. I just don't super recall you know i know you guys and girls have to adjust to different environments different things out there and and, you know you see it out here there's so many other organizations and everybody has you know different rules or whatnot and protocols all along all under the same umbrella pro wrestling uh but if you had if you had your pick wherever you want to go you got it where would it be and why shoot that's tough so uh my mindset is always that i want to be out everywhere traveling you know, going to as many places as you can. Like, I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Mexico. I want to get more out in the Midwest. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I would be lying if I said that, like, the little kid in me would, you know, would not want to go to WWE because, you know, I would. Um, I, But I also, with that, you know, it comes, you know, uh, AEW is doing a lot of good things. And I think that also looks like, a, for a lot of people, a very tempting option as well. Uh, probably like the biggest um, secondary option in a long time because they appear to have the money to do, you know, production how they want and do things the way they want to do. And that's a good avenue because not only are you, you know, you're going to be in front of like that big crowd and be like, you know, on that popular TV channel, but also um, you can have your own creative freedom as well. Like, do the, do the things that is that you want to do with yourself, with, with whatever it is that you're doing. So I think a lot of people consider that like a good option as well. But I mean, hey, give me a contract. That's what I want right now. <laughs> it's like, like, listen, I don't care where it is. Just put the zeros. Just, Try that's to it. earn a contract 2020. Hopefully hey, coronavirus didn't put a, a halt on that. I don't know. Hashtag earn a contract. 
I mean, listen, you got to get creative during these times. And, you know, it's getting it's getting weird out here. I mean, we don't know, again, when it's going to clear up. Um, so we got to just do the best we can to stay relevant right now. Right. And, if, like, we don't even know what it is going to be like when we do come back. Like, oh, how are they going to try to, like, regulate this a certain way? Like, is it going to be mandatory to wear, like, masks at a show? Like, how many people are they going to let into the building? you know, at a time, like, it's just, it's, it's weird to think about what it might be. I mean, if you don't have a six foot reach, I don't think anybody's going to be hitting anybody in the ring. (laughs) (laughs) Right. How do we, how do we, this is not social distance. I mean, uh, unfortunate news that just broke a couple days ago is that New York, uh, we might not be having any sporting events, um, you know, for the rest of the year because of this that's going on right now. And wrestling's included under that. Um, and I'm, I don't know how true it is. I mean, I know we operate out of Jersey, but you know what happens usually with New York, Jersey just follows in suit. So yeah. hopefully this is not the case. Um, but if it is, we're going to be doing a lot more BCW of, uh, of interviews and maybe calling matches. And, you know, would that be something you'd be interested on in jumping on, on here? Maybe calling that match at Queen of the North two or the Queen of the North, the original Queen of the North match that you were involved in? Oh, you mean like doing like commentary over it? Yeah, like like, like commentary. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that's a good that's a good uh, good uh, idea, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because think about it. Like you know, we get your thoughts. I mean, because it might be certain spots of the match that you remember, and you could you know enlighten us about what was going through your mind uh, mm-hmm. during those times. So you know, we definitely we got to improvise over here, Savannah. That's that's what it's about right now. Right. So um, it'd be a good way to still like have content being put out there you know yeah and then that's why the curtain call is still here we're still trying to make something happen and check and in on all the guys the people else. interested you have to and that, when we have you on they're interested they're, they're viewing this right now i know there's been a lot of people asking for you um right yeah, yeah so i was i was happy to hear that i says i'm terrified to do this interview but i'm gonna have it on uh so you know, here it is. You're you know? lucky we're not in the same place right now. I'll just keep saying that's that. The only, that's the only reason why you don't see the sweat trickling off my head right now is because I know that we're at distance. and we're, we're There's a little bit right there. I see it. It's gone. But getting back on track now. Wrestling. We're talking mm. wrestling. Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Where is Savannah Evans? Ten years from now? Like, I don't even know if I can speculate, like, I I would still love to be doing what it is that I am doing, creating my art uh, for people. I just you don't know where though. We we already covered that. Uh, what company? But yeah. yeah, I would definitely love ten years from now to still be wrestling, to still be happy, to still be healthy. Uh, so I just want more of what's already going on. The vision is all right. Get this, the cannibal on top of the throne <laughs> oh. looking down at all of her defeated uh, victims <laughs> it's, it's a better answer right? it's been a blessing to, to talk to but i want to give you the floor right now and i want you to tell and pretty much say anything that you want to say anything you want to get off your mind does not even have to be wrestling related uh any message you want to get out there cool i feel like the biggest thing that's just facing all of us right now is the uh quarantine the shelter in place that that um that we're currently going through. Like, I know a lot of people, like, it's got people down and and discouraged and anxious, and a lot of people, um, you know, uh, handle their anxiety in different ways. But I just want to, I really, really, really want people to have a positive outlook about this. I, I hate going to social media and seeing people, like, post negatively about, whether it's this or, like, any other thing. Like, um... I always want people to have a positive outlook on stuff. So I, so I personally never try to post anything negative, but I challenge everyone else to do the same. Uh, just I want everyone to stay safe. You know, like be rational, use your common sense, I, but also I, have faith in the back of your mind that uh, wrestling will be back. Uh, I, you just made me go babyface right now. I don't like it. Oh, I don't like the, it at all. See, I, I don't force me. My God, I gotta be careful. Um, I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted you to get some sort of a message out there because I, I know even even the heels, you guys, you have a soft spot. You, maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Maybe I don't not. like to. Ex- I don't like to expose that. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep kayfabe alive. 
Uh, but Savannah, where could where can the fans find you and follow you? And if there's any merch you want to plug, the floor is yours. Are, are you trying to um, get me off of this interview already? Um, no. If you want to continue talking, we can talk. I'm, I'm look. I'm looking at the top. I swear to God, I'm sorry. I'm looking. At the top. I got cold in one ear, and then I got you. And I'd rather deal with cold than deal with 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 you. No, so, no, no. Talk, talk. It's all it's all good. These people don't want to hear us talk all day. I understand it. Um, for social media, uh, please follow and uh, keep. Uh, rather, I will keep everyone updated about what I'm doing. Oh, well, not a much right now. There's no shows right now, but usually I will post my schedule. Uh, on my Facebook fan page, which is Savannah EVS uh, on Facebook. Same goes for Instagram. That's probably the one that I'm on the most. I don't know if I'm posting the most on there, but I'm on there the most. And then as well on Twitter, Savannah Evans, uh, the letter N, the letter V. Uh, this other Savannah Evans that has that name, she's got to go. She's, she's, she's got to go. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me. I just recently um, opened up a pro wrestling tea store. So check that out. Both my t-shirts are up there. And I should have a big cartel site coming up soon where you can also get, you know, 8x10s. And I really want to get on coming out with a bunch of different variety of merch like stickers, buttons, pens, that kind of thing. So, wow. I think we could see like like a Savannah Evans Hannibal mask or something like that come out for uh, Halloween. Well, we'll think about it, okay? We'll think about it. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be doing uh, <laughs> masks. But a, but a uh, Hannibal Lecter Cannibal mask would be pretty dope. No, I, I buy one. Well, I'm going to buy something right now. I'm hoping that's going to, you know, help, uh, you know, making it making a truce from this. But anytime I talk to the guys or girls, it's always a blessing. And I'm glad to see you're doing well. You're holding up. You know, God bless you and the family. Be safe right now. And just... Uh, I guess continue waiting because that's, that's the name of the game, Savannah. But when we come back, <laughs> when we come back, I know yes. I know the Queen of the Monsters is going to claim her throne, get her trophy, and have a good feeling. She's going to be taking over that women's division in BCW. Yes, bring it on. She said it. She's <laughs> ready, folks. Savannah <laughs> Evans, you guys. you're welcome. Thank you you guys you so be much. safe too, okay? Thank you so much, Savannah. You know, I wanted to do things a little bit different this week on The Curtain Call. I wanted to actually have just a regular conversation with Savannah. And moving forward, that's what I want to do with a lot of the guys and girls out there. Because, you know, a lot of times we're sitting here and, and we're asking questions. And they may be questions that, you know, a lot of the fans want to know. But I also want to just have a casual conversation. Because there's a lot of people that are locked up in their homes right now that are not essential workers. And they haven't been speaking to the outside world, actually just conversating and not getting peppered with a slew of questions. And I figured, you know what? Let me start this week. Let me just talk to Savannah, see how she's doing, and throw some random questions out there. So, folks, that was just a, a shoot interview. And I got to be honest with you. There was nothing planned in this interview. There was a couple questions that came to my mind that I was curious about and a couple I thought that maybe the fans wanted to know. But other than that, it was just a conversation and it was a great conversation with Savannah. I love the fact that she's so positive. She's so 90s. Her music, her taste in music reminds me a lot of my taste in music. So Savannah, I appreciate you for taking the time, jumping on the curtain call with yours truly, Jimmy J, and blessing the faithful fans with your presence. I promise you, listen, that piece of paper, I know it didn't do it for you, but we're going to have something special for you as soon as things get up and running. And the question is, when are they getting up and running? Because, you know, a lot of the fans are clamoring. They are seething to return. They want to see pro wrestling. They've been reaching out to me. Jimmy, please, let's see another match in BCW Archives, which we will be doing next week, so stay tuned for that. And they've been saying, Jimmy, you know, let me get on the show. Let me talk to you. And that brings me to my next segment of the show, my favorite segment probably in pro wrestling right now. And it is the five minutes of fate with the faithful. It is time to shine that light on all the fans, the heart of this business, the pro wrestling fan. So without further ado, here is another faithful fan of BCW. All right, folks, it is time for my favorite segment of the week in any pro wrestling. I said it before and I'll continue to say it. It is the five minutes of faith with the faithful and today's faithful fan, 
Very good friend of mine, actually, Joe. Hey, I don't want to give out your government, your last name, but Joe, how have you been, buddy? I've been good. How about yourself? Oh, uh, could it be better I'm talking to you right now, seeing a familiar face? Uh, it's always I, good I, to I see agree. a face during this time, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, I'm holding up good, you know, doing the best I can, enjoying the time off, relaxing. That's all we can do. And staying right up now. late, watching my Dark Side of the Ring. And what was the last uh, Dark Side of the Ring you watched? Uh, the one with Dr. D, David Schultz. Oh, I, I didn't see that one yet. How was it? Oh, man, you got to see it. It's awesome. Oh, definitely. I, I got to take a look at that, man. I, you know, it's on dark- YouTube as well. So, And they repeat it, so, you know. Oh, yeah. And these Dark Side of the Ring uh, they, shows that they, they have on Vice, forget about it. It's phenomenal. Oh, my God, Some of yes. them heart-wrenching I've seen, but, I mean, it, it's just I'm enjoying it. And I know you are. Me, too. I, I, when it comes to knowing about wrestling and all, I'm all for it. Dude, I wanted to give you the floor right now, okay? Oh, if there's anything during this time, because, you know, and I stress this every week, you know, mental health is very important. Sometimes there's individuals that don't have an outlet. I want to give all the fans right now an outlet as well. If there's anything that you want to talk about, and it doesn't have to be wrestling related, you can get it out right now. Uh, whatever you want, the floor is yours. Well, I can say that I – the only thing I miss about this is uh, seeing you guys – you know the pay-per-views that's the only thing i miss getting together for wrestling pay-per-views and all have you ever been to a bcw show no i have not i mean i've checked it on uh, youtube so and i asked you because i I know you always supported bcw but i know that the show that may have been a little out there or whatnot and i was going to ask you i mean if there's anybody outside that you would like to see in this organization when things get back to normal who is that individual in the independent wrestling? I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's a tough call, though. I mean, I, I like seeing the young talent, though, from yeah. different federations. Dude, we're going to incorporate some of the old matches in the archive that people may have not known about because we had a lot of big names uh, on BCW shows. I mean, we've had Billy Gunn before. Uh, oh, my God. Had, okay. Yeah. I mean, we, we're talking about guys with full-blooded Italians. Uh, uh, wow. FBI that was on the show. Montekia, I consider him a big – Name and definitely an independent scene. Uh, he's still in the business. Yeah. All right. So, cool. cool. And, and you know, like in in BCW itself, uh, I mean, the list goes on. You know, there's so many people that have been a part of this company. Joey Ryan recently uh, that maybe people don't know about, and we want to show Joseph P. Stuff. Ryan now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so many different people in the independent scene, um, and I know you know some of them. I know there's other names, even myself. We we can't we don't know them all. But if right, there's of course. anybody out there um, that you would like to see in BCW or any match that you would like to see us put on, let me know. What, what, do you, what is it? Who do you want to see? What match do you want to see? Oh, man, I got to <laughs> – you know, it's a, a lot to think about because, I mean, I'm checking different leagues. So, you know, nobody's really caught my special eye yet. All right. All right listen, but, anybody. I mean, any I'm, I'm name, checking – as I'm checking these guys right now, they could be future NXT or AEW stars or even NWA or yeah, no, MLW. Yeah, no, right. Now, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, but, you know, also, WWE released a lot of people, and you know this. Right? I know, and, yeah. So, and right I mean, now, it's a free agent season, maybe. Is there anything you want to plug right now? Is there, Where can people find you? Where can people find Joey A right here? Oh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, um, Reddit. Pinterest, Tumblr, everywhere. Where? What are the links, Joe? What are the names? Uh, uh, just, I mean, Joe, uh, well, I, you know what I, mean, I got to, no, I got to, I have so many and oh, I lost so many. track of mine, but. Well, we're going to find you. We're going to get a link yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely, 100%, Joe, because. I, I have it all on my phone, so. We appreciate you and we appreciate your support, buddy. No, absolutely, man. Thank you. Uh, You can uh, reach out to me anytime. Absolutely. I'll be happy to talk about anything. It could be wrestling or whatever. It's fun. When we get back up and running, are you coming to the anniversary? Oh, when is that? We don't know yet, but when we have it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I know. You're going to be there, right? You're going to be at BCW anniversary? I'll see, man. Depends on the date. Depends on it. Oh, Joe. Oh, come on, Joe. Insult, <laughs> just a little bit. Insult me a little bit here. 
You got, you got. No, I'm no, not. It's just nah, nah, nah. right now. It's a lot of uncertainty right now. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right, brother. You're right. I mean, it, it sucks, man. But you know, right now we're we're making the best of it. You and I. Yeah, definitely. We're making definitely, the best bro. of it. I mean, yeah. I know it's boring being home and this and that, but hey, this is a good thing to reach out. I got, I got some homework for you, Joe. All yeah, right, homework. homework. Okay, I want you. All right, because I know you always supported us at the watch parties. You supported VCW and everything. I want you to look at the YouTube channel, right? Look at the Brie Combination Wrestling YouTube channel. I want you to go back and look at some of the matches. Look at a Darius Carter match or look at – Yeah, know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing good things about there. him, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, we have, a, we have a very talented roster, and I think it's – I think a lot of these guys and girls are very underrated. And there's a lot of people that really don't know about a lot of these older matches. So do that. Go back, right? But you got some time now. Go back into the BCW archives and just watch a couple right. matches and get back to me and, and give me your feedback on that and what you think about oh, I will. those matches. I, I, check so, I, have, I check so much wrestling on my uh, YouTube, so. Well, you're the man, I mean, Joe. You're I, the man. I, I, I love to mix it up, James. That's how I am. You're the best, Joe. I, I appreciate Past, you. Past, present, on. future. <laughs> It, it's awesome. I do want to give a shout out, Andrew Scott Fogelman. Thank you for introducing me to James Haggerty over here. The government's out, folks. It's no longer Jimmy J. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> nah, yeah. Definitely. I had to give a shout out to Andrew Fogelman on that one. Oh yeah, no, big Andrew. As a matter of fact, I've seen him today. He came into, you know, where I work for oh, a shoot. Okay, all right. Yeah, so it was. Um, that, it was that's fun. cool, man. He was. I, I'm sure he was with guy. mom and dad. He was with mom and dad. Yeah, he was with mom and dad. He's a good guy. Oh, he's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Funny guy, too. Yeah, man. We're alike. Yeah. We're yeah, alike, I guess, in so many ways. We're going to wrap it up here, buddy. I appreciate you. God bless no, you. Oh, you're welcome. Family. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Five minutes of fate with the faithful Mr. Joey right here, folks. We're going to get right back to the studio. We're going to check in on some indie wrestlers. Uh, Big Joe, you got to love him. Joey, thank you so much for taking the time. This will get better. I promise you that. And once we get back to normal, oh, we're going to be kicking it, Joe. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing it bigger than we've ever done over here at BCW. And, you know, a lot of the, the guys and girls, they know this. And they can't wait to come back. So this week, I have three individuals who sent us videos to keep us informed about what's been going on. So without further ado, let's shine that light on the talent right now and check in with some of our great athletes in this business. The oh so vivacious, vicious Vicky here, just touching base with everybody um, from my couch because um, we're quarantined. I'm going crazy. I don't know about you, but I don't do the whole staying inside thing. And to make matters worse, it's been pouring rain nearly every single day of April, which means that I can't, I'm gonna stop. I will stop myself. I will say. I am trying to keep busy as best as I can, as I hope all of you are too. Oh, not to make it about me. I sincerely, sincerely want to thank all those essential workers because I have friends and family who are essential workers and without them, please believe me, I don't know what, what we'd be doing right now. Um, the country's in shambles. Pro wrestling is non-existent at this time, which is whew, severely disheartening for a lot of us um you know all jokes aside that's all we really have at least for me it's my love it's my one and only love it's my everything um and uh you know to not to not have that escape so to speak is it's rough um but to keep busy i've just been trying to enhance my workouts um i've been trying to come up with different ideas for when wrestling does come back um you know trying to make peace with myself in other ways and um you know i uh just i don't really know <laughs> trying to just trying to take it day by day and just my camera keeps moving but this makes it all original and fun but yeah so um if you want to follow me you can follow me instagram at vicious oh wait no at underscore vicious underscore vicky underscore and facebook it's my shoot name i don't really want to You'll find me. And Twitter. Underscore vicious underscore Vicky underscore. Yeah. Underscores just make things every 
like liqueur it makes everything liqueur i don't know but uh oh and prowrestlingtees.com the vivacious vicious vicky store please by all means i mean you can wear a shirt with me on it or you can wear a shirt with a little nameplate not this shirt so i'm not you know repping my shirt right now but uh similar um yeah check it out and be safe stay home do what you have to do because I want this shit to stop because I think we all want our lives back now. So let's all work together and do that. Ciao. Hello. My name is Nikos Ricos. I am the Spartan Pitbull. I am the Stamos of professional wrestling. And this is Ivy the Hamster, sister to Harley the Hamster and Bear the Hamster, who right now is sleeping but will be awake after this video. And recently... Jama's, John, James, James J. Hey, James J. Haggerty, that's it. I knew it was a stupid name. Asked me to answer some questions. And he said, in no longer than two minutes. So, without further ado, Jama's, let's start the clock. Jama's first question to me was Nikos, what is the plan for? when I get back to win every single wrestling match that I have. Duh. Okay. Jama's next question was, how have I been? Well, I've been spending all my time working out with my hamsters and hanging out with another buddy of mine. So I've been doing great. Great questions, Jama's, James, James. Next question, where can you find me? Stupid question. And last one, merch. Where can you find my merch? I don't have any merch. I don't care to sell merch. I don't care to invest in it because I don't want to deal with fans. I don't want them to hit me up on social media. I don't want them to walk up to me at a show asking me for my shirts. When I have a shirt, everybody is going to want a shirt. I'm even gonna make little hamster shirts for ones just like Ivy. Speaking of shirts, look at this shirt. Real men love hamsters. Gifted to me by my really good friend, Claudia at the Westchester Rescued Hamster Haven. There's a from. And oh yeah, this video is for BCW. So there's your plug as well. So Jamas, James, Jane, whatever your name is, there's your questionnaire. It was a waste of my time, but I did it anyway. And that is exactly why you're paying me for my time. Any other wrestler who didn't ask for his money, you're also stupid. Opa. Intern, you recording? Now, I, I, I know obviously the global pandemic has put a pause on everything, but we still have big plans to handle in BCW. We have all these L's we have to hand out. See? Joey Ace, one for you. Okay, uh, Mike Law, that's for you. AJ Pan, you and your entire uh, faction, that's for you. Hell, no one can beat Darius Carter. Maybe I'll step up to it. That's for you. The point is, anyone, anywhere, anytime in a BCW ring can get it. I damn sure won't, won't let COVID-19 take me down. Uh, if we could beat this, then all these guys can get it too. That's my plans when we come back to BCW. Intern, cut it. Three very different individuals we just seen right now, folks. Uh, the ace that runs the place, Ace Andrews. Always handing at those L's and... I just want to stay off that radar. I just don't want to receive any L's. Ace, you are my favorite. And I'm going to continue to tell you and because of that so I don't receive that L. But phenomenal job, buddy. And Vicious Vicky, very real. I love it. I love the organicness that she brings to the table. And we need that over here in BCW and everywhere in general. So thank you, Vicky, for that. And, well, Nikos... Uh, the name, sir, is Jimmy J. It is not Jameis John. Uh, it is is James. And if for a shoot, folks, James J. Haggerty. Okay, yes, that that is the name, Nikos. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm glad to see you're doing well, and uh, and it looks like you're going to be ready for action once things get back to normal. So big shout out to you, sir. You are in phenomenal shape, and uh, just continue 
doing what you're doing. Can't wait to see you, even though you didn't get my name right. But anyway, folks, three tremendous talents. Okay, these are the guys and girls of the future. Support them. Support indie wrestling. Hell, support this company right here. The company that I, oh man, and I say this every week, but I mean it. The company that I am so proud to be a part of, Brie Combination Wrestling. We are keeping the show going. And folks, as that curtain comes down, I want to remind you that next week we will be digging right back into the archives of BCW and showing you an older match. We will have an update on some of the indie talent, the five minutes with the faithful, maybe an interview, all that and more next week. And as that curtain comes down, I got to say, and I have to remind everyone that BCW, Bree Combination Wrestling, is where the future lives.